Good afternoon and welcome to the Expansion of Consciousness. I'm your host, Jason Medlock. And tonight we have a very, very special guest, Dr. Amy Novotny. Uh, but before we bring uh, Dr. Novotny on, I am glad to be back here uh, for another episode. Um, I've had a, I've had an interesting last three weeks. I was uh, doing the show, uh, not at my home, but uh, off location. And I was doing some contract work um, and I was applying a lot of the mindset technique principles I teach my own students. So I got a chance to move myself into a environment that was fast paced, that was uh, pressure, pressure, pressure. And I said, you know what, I'm going to do this and apply some of my own techniques and let's see how I do. And lo and behold, there were days that were a little tense because the atmosphere uh, in this organization was very, very, uh, very, very, uh, you know, uh, micromanaging type management. But then I started to think about what I taught my own students. And I don't know how many coaches will reveal this to you. And I started to apply the technique even more and it worked and it worked time and time again. And I spent uh, three weeks there and I was, I was done, but it, it proved to me that all the wonderful modalities and all the uh, different skills that I've learned over the years that I've taught many students over the years actually can work for the actual teacher coach himself. But we're going to bring Amy on in, in, in a second uh, to, to explain and talk about how to manage pain, how to manage stress, um, uh, anxiety, using, using techniques that she's worked on uh, for a number of years on, and has worked on in her career. So without without over talking it, let, let's talk about Dr. Amy Novotny, who founded uh, the PABR Institute with a mission to provide pain, stress, and anxiety relief to those who seek a naturalistic form of treatment when other treatment methods have fallen short. Her unique approach comes from her experience tr uh, treating in a variety of settings and with a wide range of parent uh, patent uh, populations over the past 12 years. Her, her background in orthopedics, sports geatrics, balance disorders, nerve injuries, and most recently chronic pain and influences from coursework at the Postural Restoration Institute gave her the foundation to develop this treatment method to address a wide variety of pain and restrictive conditions. Her methods have helped countless people reduce and eliminate pain, stress, anxiety, orthopedic surgeries, sleeping issues, and the need for medications. She co-authored two Amazon number one best-selling books, Don't Quit, Stories of Persistence, Courage and Faith, Success Habits of Super Achievers, which shares her journey on how and why she developed the PABR method. She also co-authored Wall Street Journal's bestseller from WTF, to oh my god and what the <laughs> so we, we'll just we'll just spell it out with a little lol unpacking entrepreneurs hidden lessons without any further ado let's bring on amy about me hello amy how are you i'm doing well thanks Jason, for I could have, I, i'm sorry i, I could have continued to read your bio for another mm, let's let's just say seven minutes <laughs> that's how talented you are no i i love life there's so much to do and try out there so why not right why not i mean it's so much to do it's so much to try out there um and we just try to as practitioners as uh, spiritual teachers, as coaches, we try to figure out how we can transfer what we've learned and what we've studied and what we've gone to college for and integrate that so we can help people live better lives. Absolutely. And it, it can be hard. It can be hard. And sometimes it's not a clear path. Sometimes it's a lot of self-discovery and you stumble onto something and it works and you have to figure out why it works. And that was kind of my path. <laughs> how I started down this road. Um, so Dr. Amy uh, Novotny. Now I've gotten permission, I'm just gonna tell the audience right now from Dr. Novotny to call her Amy. So no one's like, she, he, he should be calling her doctor. She earned that. She's giving me permission. So Amy, how did you get into helping people 
get out of pain and stretch through breath work because let me tell you, breath work, breath work is absolutely amazing. I'm a I'm a transcendental meditator. Um, I've done all kind of breath work techniques. I love kalapate breath, but you're using it to help people get out of pain and stress. Stress. How are yes. you doing? Yeah. So I'm going to add a little bit of clarification to what I do, just so that way people like you who are very familiar with breath work don't get alarmed when if they were to work with me and experience something different. So I wouldn't classify what I do as breath work, but instead it's working on breathing mechanics, mm. which I see as something different because most breath work out there looks at the rhythm of your breathing. It may look at how, you know, like with box breathing, I'll just use something like a, a general example. You breathe in for four, hold for four, blow out for four, hold for four. There's a rhythm to it. There's a lot of different rhythms of inhalation or exhalation for a count of certain things. But what we're doing and what I'm doing is looking at how the nervous system impacts your breathing mechanics, how your breathing mechanics influence your nervous system, and how your position of your body, including your rib cage, affects both of those. Hmm. And I got into this. I started off with a doctorate in physical therapy, doing that for a while. And I moved away from that when I realized a lot of what is implemented in the physical therapy rehab world is something external to the body. And it wasn't good enough in my mind. It didn't really help people change in and have ownership of those changes. They were just applying something to the outside of themselves, hoping for a change. And so I was actually training to qualify for the Boston Marathon, running on a treadmill for eight miles three times a week at a <laughs> at a 55 minute uh, a span of time. So I was running just under a seven minute mile. And I started experimenting on myself, experimenting with the position of my rib cage, my breathing mechanics, and it influenced my nervous system. So my body relaxed in the middle of this high speed run and all the pain and aches that I had as a typical runner, endurance runner. And I'd already run six or so marathons. So I was, I was well-versed in marathon running. All the pain went away. And I got off the treadmill and all the things that I used to teach people to do to stretch, foam roll, scrape, all these things, I stopped doing. I was able to calm down my nervous system doing a high intensity activity. And because of it, my body freed up. And so I started studying what in the world was I doing to myself? How do I come up with a process and how do I help other people? And that led me onto the journey to develop this business to develop this method and really do a lot of nervous system work with people, which includes changing the mechanics of how they use their diaphragm and how they perceive breathing, which is different than just um, breath work where you breathe in a pattern based on how you already breathe, if that makes sense. It makes a, whole, a lot of sense. And, and one of the things when I'm, you know, I'm, I work in healing, as well. And I use quantum healing hypnosis to maybe do some of the same things. I think there's a lot of different modalities or a lot of different techniques that can help oh, heal the same type of thing. And that's great. But you know, there is a, there's a belief out there and I hadn't found it to be true. And it's a belief about pain and aging. And when we, in quantum healing, we're taught when, when the body is experiencing pain, disease or whatever, is happening, we are taught that the body is sending you a message and it may manifest as a achy elbow or achy ankle. And it always means something or disease or cancer, which represents anger. Mm -hmm. My question to you, doc, is why do you believe people uh, uh, believe that pain is synonymous with aging? And why is that incorrect? You know, from your perspective. Right. So we hear it. We often we often take a lot of phrases and ideas from people who are older than us. Mm -hmm. And we, we often don't question them. We hear, 
oh, I'm getting older, I'm going to have aches and pains. And it's so prevalent in an elderly population. So we just assume, okay, I'm going to have aches and pains as I get older. But that's not necessarily the case. And let me kind of dive into kind of why I don't believe that. So when someone has a physical pain, it's usually because the body has shifted into a position where tissues butt up against each other. And we know that the nervous system tells the muscles to behave a certain way on bones and joints. If you can get the muscles to behave differently by affecting that nervous system, you can get the bones and joints to behave differently. And so I'll do this with people who are bone on bone arthritic, where they've done shots, injections, medications for decades. They're scheduled for a knee replacement or hip replacement. And what we'll do is we'll work on the nervous system to teach them how to calm down the nervous system. And what happens then is that releases the muscles so they're not contracting abnormally on the bones. The bones go back into their neutral, normal position. The pain goes away because now they have space again. So this nervous system I'm talking about is the fight or flight nervous system. So oh. we often hear fight, flight, freeze, or fawn, which means people pleasing in a quick sense of the word. And when we are in that state, which we're often in that state throughout our life and often on a daily basis, muscles start to contract without our awareness. When they contract without our awareness, they start to shift the position of our body, our bones, and our joints. If you don't release it on a daily basis, which most people don't, the bones and joints continue to stay in that shifted position. And that becomes your new normal because now the nervous system thinks, oh, I got by 24 hours with doing it. I'm going to just keep on doing it and until I hear differently. And so that builds up over time. So it's not the age part of it. It's the buildup of stressors that cause a physical change and physiological change in the body that behaves on the muscles and joints. And so what I see so often is someone has a big, huge mental, emotional, intellectual stressor, spiritual stressor. They go to bed, they wake up the next morning and they have some type of pain. And they're like, oh, well, I didn't do anything different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And sometimes it's like, well, I got in a ski accident 20 or 40 years ago. I'm like, no, 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 that tissue healed. There was a guarded response that added to this. But it, your nervous system ramped up so much before you went to bed. It shifted everything out of position. You go to bed and it gets free reign for those hours that you're sleeping to just keep contracting that way. Because nothing's releasing it during the middle of the night. And so then you wake up and you're like, oh. I have back pain or I have shoulder pain or neck pain or whatever pain. And it's all because the nervous system changed just enough and forced a change in your body that now tissues are butting up against each other and you don't know how to release it. And you can't release it because you didn't know this was all happening over the past 20, 10, whatever years it was. And so you can literally not touch someone but teach them how to calm down the nervous system and change their breathing mechanics and position and the pain goes away. They don't have to have surgery. And I, and I do this all the time with people all over the world. Wow. And most of the joint pain uh, that's blamed on arthritis, which is probably not accurate as well, huh? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Ar arthritis gets blamed for everything. It's a degeneration of your cartilage. And yes, there's arthritis present. There possibly is present in the area where you have pain. But it's the nervous system that's controlling everything. And when you get rid of that nervous system control and calm everything down, the pain went away, your movement restored. The arthritis is still there because the, gen the degeneration of the cartilage is still there. And so that's why I try to challenge people's thinking about this. And doctors, I challenge their thinking about it and, and get them to think through this in a different way so that they can start to advise people differently. That's wonderful because you know, just to know that breath work can really help reduce or eliminate pain. I mean, a lot of people really don't know that, uh, yeah. Amy. Um, mm -hmm. And I guess one of the other things I'd like to, you know, try to help the audience uh, and myself understand is, you know, stress. You know, yeah. how can stress influence pain in our bodies? So similar to what we were just talking about, when you're stressed out, that causes the fight or flight nervous system to kick in. 
that causes muscles to contract without your awareness and it behaves on bones and joints, pulls them out of position and that's how you get pain. Wow. So working to mitigate, lessen your stress can help your body feel safer, calmer, more free. And then it can release these muscles that are behaving normally. It does require a conscious effort to release the muscles because you don't know this is happening. So it's not in your brain's awareness to release it. So there is some aspect of having awareness of this and consciously doing it. And for a lot of people, it is a process of learning how to be able to do this because they're so stuck a certain way. Okay. For all the books I've read, I, I have a good one for you. And I need to know the answer. <laughs> so emotions. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a it's a it's a it's a huge topic uh, on the show and just people in general. Uh, you know, emotion can they can it can affect your work and it, it can make you eat more and it can do a lot of different things. And I'm wondering how are they stored in the body? And we know that emotions can cause stress. It can cause a number of things. But how are they stored? Are they are they in the mu are they in the muscle tissues or where are they? It's kind of in different areas. And there's some general areas where people store their emotions, their trauma. And I'll say this generally, it can always change based on a person and based on their experiences. But a lot of places right in the armpits, right in the front of the breastbone, at the base of the breastbone is a big one, and kind of in the front of the hips. Those are areas where we're where we guard and protect ourselves. And so often when we've had some kind of very emotional or traumatic experience, we guard ourselves in those areas and we become unable to free those areas up and let go. And so as we go through the process and learn how to become vulnerable and let those areas go, some emotions might come out and it can be crying out. It can be crying. It can be shifting personalities and all of these I've seen in clients as they start to release certain areas, it, it allows them to go through their past and free that up and allow their body to exist in a different state. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. So let's, let's, let's get to the fun stuff. Sure. Yeah, we know that, well, not we, but I know that you just, you've been traveling all over the world and uh, mm -hmm. you've come in contact with wonderful and amazing people. How'd that happen for you? Just traveling all over the place, uh, using all of your uh, methods to help help people. Sure. So it kind of started in 2018 when I was hired by a world famous photographer to help him avoid a knee replacement surgery and uh, rotator cuff surgery. He had just fallen on some water and injured his shoulder, tore some tissues. So he visited me and he wanted to be coached in this process. So he hired me and I traveled around for six months with him and his partner, coaching him on this process to help him avoid a knee replacement surgery and the rotator cuff repair surgery. So that got everything going. And then from there, I came back to Arizona. And then I started attending different events that led me to meet certain people, some well known famous people in the world, who then it got me into some masterminds and I started speaking at masterminds around the U S and the country. And then that led to other people finding out about this process and then having me speak at different events, sometimes in the health and wellness world, sometimes in personal development, sometimes in an executive world. So it kind of has just branched out based on just saying yes and, and helping people basically. So, I want to, you just touched on the executive part of this. We're going to talk about that, but I'm just amazed. How do you, how, so how do you help people? Like, what are the nuts and bolts helping a person out of orthopedic surgery? I know that, you know, I would put a person in trance and then I would then move them past the theta state into the somnolistic brainwave state uh -huh. and then call forth on their higher self and you know, uh, get mutual agreement with their higher self and then the healing happens. Mm -hmm. Obviously you're doing it a different way. Mm -hmm. So how do you help people out of having surgery, uh, orthopedic in general? Right. So we have to look at all of their daily habits. 
So how they move, how they reach, how they walk, how they sleep, how they sit, how they bend over, all of those habits are contributing to the state of them needing the surgery. Mm. So we have to look at how is their nervous system playing a role in all of those habits. And so we start changing them by first teaching them how to calm down the nervous system. So they're doing it themselves and they feel their body relax. Then we have to teach them how do you stabilize in that relaxed position by using your body differently, using different muscles and and muscles in your arms and legs that are that promote sta stability and freedom instead of the back muscles that encourage the fight or flight state. And so as they start to transition and feel how they can separate the fight or flight aspect of their body from the stabilization part of their body, they start to change. Mm -hmm. And then we start to teach them how do you do this while you're participating in daily life activities? How do you do it when you're walking? How do you do it when you're running? And so they are learning themselves how to control their nervous system so their body frees up, stabilizes, and they use their body completely differently. And so when they do that, they feel their body change. They feel their bones go back into position. They feel the pain go away. They don't need the surgery and they own it all. It's not something that I do to them. They do everything themselves yes. and they can continue doing it. And voila, they're good to go. Wow. Absolutely amazing. And the, the fact that you can um, coach a person to mm -hmm become intimately aware of themselves. Mm -hmm. And that, that in itself is amazing. But you know what else is amazing? This right here. You, you have to tell us all about the PABR Institute. Um, and you know, what's, what's going on? What's cool about it? <laughs> so this is the company that I formed for doing this. And um, you know, on the website, you can access a lot of free material interviews. I work with people one-on-one, -on -one, but also there's video courses for those who aren't really sure or those who are busy or on a different time zone that conflicts with mine, but there's ways that people can get involved and really learn and study this material so that they can, they can change their life. It's really about you gaining control over that nervous system so you can live a different existence. I think I lost you. Did I lose Jason? Earth to Jason. No, no, so. no, no. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> and I see this. You have courses. Uh, I just wanted to give you time on the screen. I see you have courses and, and everything. Um, so let's talk about that for a second. What what do we have? Uh, you have the Total Body Freedom Fundamental Life. Uh, 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 Fundamental Live. Mm -hmm. uh, can we can we talk about some of the things that in uh, the resources that you have uh, available for the, for people? Absolutely. So there's two different courses right now. There's a fundamentals and there's an advanced version. So the advanced you can't do until the fundamentals have been completed. With the fundamentals, there's a video course that you can access at any time. The live course, I have it periodically through the year where we'll get maybe 10 people on Zoom together and we go through the process of what people will learn in the video course. And sometimes people like that because I can watch them a little bit. For people who have a little bit more of the anxiety or um, some fear of other people seeing them, then the video course is definitely an option. And then for those who want one-on-one -on -one where I'm picking them apart and really it's a little bit more intense, then we can do one-on-one -on -one and there's different package levels for that where we start at six packages or you can do 11 or 21 uh, sessions per the package. Gotcha. And you're able to book online and all sorts of things. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to get into your books. Uh, are, are they uh, the Don't Quit and um, and Success Habits for Super Achievers? Let's talk about these things. You know, what can people expect to read uh, uh, with the purchase? Sure. And I just want to go back to the can, you can book online. So I actually do screen everyone I work with. So you can book a free consult with me to discuss if it's the right fit. And I do that so that way people know what to expect. 
that they don't just sign up for one-on-one -on -one coaching with me and not really understand what we're doing. It's to provide clarity and make sure it, it really is something that they are looking for and that they need. So I just wanted to clarify that. So people are trying to find where they can sign up for one-on-one. -on -one, and that is something that I do filter people out for and, and, and just to make sure it's not wasting anyone's time. Um, and so uh, the book, sorry, the books. So I've been in several books where I describe this process, how it came about, why we, um, why often we get faced with different situations where you want to give up and why I chose not to and how I was motivated by certain patients and seeing the results because I've paint, painted this kind of rosy, but it's been a, it's been a long process, a lot of adversity, a lot of pushback in when I was developing this process and trying to get it out there. So one of the books is about that. One of the other ones is about, different successful habits and why it's important to for your health to developing these habits and why the nervous system is so critical to that because it affects every aspect of your life and your health and your organ systems and then also kind of the entrepreneur aspect of that with the lol book um so that kind of goes into that in becoming an entrepreneur wow wow that is absolutely amazing you know i wanted to ask you well let's just do this right quick uh, let's make sure the audience knows how to find uh, you, uh, www.pabrinstitute.com. Um, check out Dr. Amy um, there. Uh, she has a number of books uh, that you can pick up and, and truly understand you know, how to be coached to heal yourself, how to be coached to um, you know, do wonderful things uh, with your body that normally people couldn't do unless they were working with someone special um, like you, Doc. So uh, I guess I want to know, <laughs> I know that, you know, you, you're into running. You mentioned that earlier, but you were able to run 50 miles pain free. How are you able to do that? It's all the nervous system work. Literally what I've been talking about is I keep my nervous system calm. The body joints stay in the correct position that they're supposed to be. The muscles are behaving the way they should be. So I can just keep running. Literally, wow. it's the more control you have over your nervous system, the more you can control pain. I mean, just the other day I was working with someone and we had been working for a while and they said, I, I had some pain. I implemented it and the pain went away and I've never been able to do that. And that's what I say to people. When you have pain, it's a signal from your body to your brain that something is out of position. So if you can get the nervous system to tell the muscles to stop pulling you out of position, the pain goes away. Wow. And I'm sure that um, professional athletes should be beating your door down uh, because a lot of, a lot of the orthopedic uh, injuries they have, even after football and, and during football, that, that should be a huge uh, audience uh, in itself. Yes, I do work with some professional yes. athletes. Great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So let's get, let's go to the let's go to the actual coaching mechanism of of what you offer. You spent a lot of years developing your method, then you start teaching it. So how do you help entrepreneurs perform at a high level uh, in whatever they may want to do? So a lot of times with entrepreneurs, they're facing a lot of stress, anxiety. I literally just got off a call with one who owns several businesses, and stress is a big part of her world. Yes. Where it's on a daily basis and her health took a beating and she is working really hard on calming her nervous system down. And so what happens is when your nervous system is ramped up, you're in high alert mode, your executive functions go whoop, right down your ability to think, create, analyze, to um, handle multiple tasks, to be emotionally stable. So you're not reactive all of those things start to go away, the more stressed out you are. And so our work together with entrepreneurs is often, how do we get you to feel safe in your body? How do you, how do you feel that calm by physically controlling yourself and your nervous system so that you know, okay, if I need to be analytical, if I need to go through this project and produce something, I'm going to make sure my body's in a state 
so that it is calm and relaxed so that energy is all going to my brain instead of my body being in a state of fight or flight and detracting from my brain and executive functions, we want it to go all the way back to the brain. And so we work through this process to get them so that they can do that and they can recognize, hey, you know what, there's this huge project or I'm gonna have this meeting or I'm gonna interact with people, I'm gonna speak. I need to get myself in that safety state so that everything can be about the performance so that I can create the impact and the connections that I need to. So Dr. Nabani, obviously uh, we talk about a lot of orthopedic uh, things and really just stress. Yeah. So I'm sure you help people with trauma or someone who's been abused. So how do you help people with those type of uh, issues get relief? So it's a little bit of a slower process because their body is so guarded and they've found safety being in a fight or flight state. So we have to then work through very slowly them freeing up their body again. So wow. some of the things that might be very intuitive to you, Jason, that you and I, if I were to show you some stuff, you're like, yeah, I got it. Okay, two seconds, I'm good, I'm good to go. Someone who's experienced certain types of trauma, if I were to teach the same amount or the same way, it might trigger something. And we don't want to trigger anything. What we want to do is slowly find ways for them to feel safe in their body so they can feel differently. And as their body starts to release areas where they've held on to emotional experiences in the past, then they can start to release and find safety in their body again. And so it is a little bit of a slower process because we want to make sure that we don't create uh, additional problems or additional stressors in their life. We want it to all go towards having them feel safe within themselves again. Absolutely wonderful. Um, we're getting up, getting close to our, our time limit, but I want you to, do you have a message that you can leave the audience or maybe a free gift, maybe you know something that they can hang their hat on, anything you wanna uh, say special to the audience uh, words of encouragement, anything like that? Absolutely. A couple things. So you can go to the website and you can download a guide that just kind of starts to get you into this process. The other thing is when you're going about your day, this will feel very counterintuitive, but let your belly button, let your gut out. Stop holding your breath, stop sucking it up and in. Because every time you try to do that, and if you try to do that all day long, you're just putting yourself in a fight or flight mode. So let your gut out. Let yourself sit back in the chair. Give your body permission to relax. You don't have to sit on the edge of the chair all day long. In fact, I tell people to get away from the edge of the chair because it's detracting from your ability to perform at a high level. And if you sit back in your chair and you fall asleep, that does mean you're sleep deprived. So that's another issue to work on. But <laughs> let yourself relax. Let your belly out. Stop holding your breath. Just become more aware. The more aware that you are and the more aware that you are of how your body and how you hold yourself, that's when you can start to make change. Wow. Beautiful and so informative. And, and I love it when I have guests uh, that come on that can really, really give the audience a strong understanding of what they do, how they do it, and how it can help you. So I really appreciate it, uh, Dr. Nobotny. I want you to hold on in the back office. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to wrap this show up and you stay there. I'll be right there to talk to you. And thank you for coming on. And we must have you back because there are a lot of other things that we could be talking about that I did not get to. So. One second. Thanks. Okay. Absolutely amazing. Uh, Dr. Amy Novotny um, is brilliant. Um, make sure you check her out at www.pabrinstitute.com. Uh, Pabrinstitute.com. And what a wonderful uh, person, a beautiful spirit, uh, sharing wisdom, sharing knowledge. Uh, helping us understand how to breathe to gain pain relief, uh, stress mechanisms uh, that you may have that trigger you. 
um, how to remove that, uh, improving entrepreneurial performance, because Dr. Novotny talked about ways she could improve your performance all by working with your nervous system, teaching you how to, um, you know, move within yourself to make those those things happen, um, helping people with surgery reduction. Uh, and she even mentioned improving athletic performance, which is absolutely wonderful. But another great guest, another great night. Uh, I am happy to be uh, in position to bring this type of content to you uh, with the expansion of consciousness. And uh, Dr. Novotny is a coach. I'm a coach. But we've all spent a number of years perfecting our method, perfecting um, uh, the, the ways we can help you use what is already inside, the infinite abilities we possess from within. So with that, I'll leave you uh, with this. Relax, trust, and discover. Thank you for listening to the Expansion of Consciousness. We're live on YouTube. Uh, you can always find us at Expansion of Consciousness, live on YouTube at Expansion of Consciousness. We're on Monday, uh, Wednesday, and Thursday, and we are excited about your participation. So when you do find us on at Expansion of Consciousness, make sure to subscribe and make sure to like. We'll see you the next time. Thank you so much. Good night. Oh, <laughs>